All right, let's get Phil Mushnick on the line. Phil, how are you doing today? Hi, David. How are you? I'm doing very good. What's What's been going on? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> you tell me. I don't know. Have you? Uh, what 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 uh, What are your thoughts? Did you see the uh, the the uh, uh, state senator who proposed uh, some sort of legislation regarding drug testing wrestlers? No, I didn't. Tell me about that. Okay, it's uh, actually uh, came out today. I heard it on the radio yesterday. Um, it's t Senator State Senator Tom Liebus, a Republican of uh, Binghamton, New York, is recommending mandatory drug testing for pro wrestlers competing in New York. Uh, McMahon, basically, this quote from Vince McMahon, uh, see the drug testing would be part of the state's, the state's licensing requirements. So that would, Brian, that would mean commission. The yeah. state licensing requirements. That would be part of the commission duties then. But uh, McMahon said that, that, you know, he had the, he had the fail, the, the, the absolute fail safe test, and then he said he, there's no such thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So what was, well, I'm sorry. What it doesn't even, it even like specify what they would be testing for either, whether it be steroids or, you know, recreational just, drugs. Well, we're testing urine or blood. If we're going to test blood, you know, watch out below. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This says that uh, this this is McMahon's comments. He goes, "We are performers. We are showmen. He'd be drug testing everyone on Broadway. He'd be drug testing the circus. If if he's trying to st single us out, that's unconstitutional." Oh God, that's just it, it, it's so, he's so full of these rationalizations that anyone who wants to parrot the company line can repeat. Um, you know, sure there are there are overdoses in in lots of lots of uh, you know entertainment venues. Uh, Movies and theater and things like that, but here's a, here's a, something where, where these these people are built of the finest condition athletes in the world, and yet they keep having this nasty habit of dropping dead in their 20s and 30s. Um, you know, it all goes back to Oregon. Why don't they wrestle in Oregon, Dave? Why don't, you can answer that better than I. Well, we all know why they don't wrestle in Oregon. I mean, they don't wrestle. They don't wrestle in Oregon because they don't want to comply with the, the drug testing. I mean, you know, for a guy with nothing to hide, he sure has a lot to hide, doesn't he? Well, right now he doesn't say he has, no, he has nothing to hide anymore. I mean, he used to say. He certainly said that before. <laughs> He's changed <laughs> his times. position on drugs virtually every week. You know, back in the Zahorian days. When the, when the uh, WWF doctor was uh, was uh, indicted by the feds and convicted and, 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 pr and imprisoned, he said there was no drug problem. And then uh, he, he began to realize that no one believed him. He says we have a pervasive drug problem. Then it was we have the most stringent, most fail-proof uh, drug drug testing system in the world, and everyone bought into that. Or at least everyone in, in the you know the mass media who doesn't look at these things. And then um, it became like, who cares after that? You know, there was a tacit understanding that people are on drugs. Meanwhile, you know, again, the Owen Hart death, which, you know, in its prima facie form, in its superficial form, was an accident, that got all the attention. But the guys are found dead in their hotel rooms in their 20s and 30s, that make, gets no attention. No, that's, there is, there is Am I coming on too strong? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean, it's it's it's, it's valid points. It's points that we've all talked that we've right. all talked about. I don't know what. Um, you know, do you have any like as far as an idea? As far as like, if you had the power, what would be what could be done to uh, clean? As, as far as at least on the drug issue, to do what to do with wrestling? I, I mean, would you you know what, what, as far as like uh, drug testing or you know because drug testing is is hardly fail safe. We have it in the Olympics, and we you know we all know that there's plenty of people on the Olympics using growth hormone. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, and even the, even the Olympic um, formula, which I believe is what ten times the amount of the normal uh, uh, rate of, of testosterone, is considered the alarm stage, <laughs> as opposed yeah. to twice as much. No, I don't have an answer. Maybe like ten thousand or something. You know, it, it, my answer yeah, would be. I think it's yeah, I think it's six, six times normal is considered the top six to, times? to be normal. Yeah, yeah. So like five point nine times normal. For testosterone would still be within the allowable limits, so Imagine you, could take that. <laughs> you could take low doses of testosterone and beat an Olympic drug test. Which, you know, which yeah, I've learned, do. Dave. I'm covering sports 23, almost 24 years now. I've learned to follow the money. If if the advertisers, if the networks, if they showed even a modicum of of, of sensibility, sensitivity, and caring about the good and welfare of these wrestlers. It would get cleaned up in a second, but they don't. It's all about money. Nobody cares. As long as they're making money, they don't care if people live or die. Well, you know, that's that's true, and it's also true in whether it be ice skating or any sport, you know, that, that has to do with, uh, you know, football. You got it. I, I, just, I was just on the Jim Rome show. We're talking about the, the, the proliferation of home runs in the major leagues. 
I said, yeah. you know, Major League Baseball lacks a comprehensive drug testing program, and they, they, they've they turned their head to Andro, they've turned their head to creatine. These guys are getting huge. I mean, shortstops are looking like – and, and well, well, who cares? Let me tell you something about, 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 about money cre- 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 creatine. Creatine is a scapegoat that people say when they're on steroids. I mean, I'm not saying that creatine doesn't saying. have its, it's value. It's but a rational when, day. It's a dodge. No, no, no. It's when, 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 when you hear about somebody going, I'm on Andro or creatine, I think that's in more cases than not a buzzword that they're – they're on steroids, but those are politically palatable ways of saying it because, know, they're, they're, legal, because they're legal. Well, you're, you're more well versed at this than I am. What I do know is that, you know, whatever's going, it costs money to drug test, and as long as, as the home run has become the essence of Major League Baseball right now and, and it's selling seats, the last thing they want to do is get rid of uh, the home run. If, if, if that means like uh, getting into their their uh, you know supplements and things they'll they'll look the other way it's just follow the money and you'll have your answers every single time i mean one of and one of the things that mcmahon would say is that baseball and he and he has brought it up that that baseball and other sports don't steroid test let's, so therefore why why should i let's I mean, put it this way though i don't know how many people play major league baseball it's 30 some odd teams or whatever and uh you know times 25 times 27 whatever the rosters are if, say, Major League Baseball suffered, on average, the death, the mysterious death of two to three to four active players every year under mysterious circumstances, it would be a page one story. There'd be a Senate subcommittee hearing the next day. In pro wrestling, it's so closeted that no one knows a darn thing. I mean, we'll... well that... That is, that is an argument that I've made before, and um, if there were equivalent numbers of, of deaths in, in these sports, baseball, basketball, football, it would be a, a much bigger oh, media please. story than it's been in wrestling. Please. Be, but, you know, that's the thing that, that really kind of blows my mind about pro wrestling fans. I'm identified as the bad guy, and I can handle that. Vince McMahon is, is identified as the good guy because, after all, he's the king of pro wrestling, and they're pro wrestling fans. But if I were in Vince McMahon's position, these people, these, these pro wrestling heroes who are dropping dead, they'd be alive. Because I'd, 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 I'd test them. I'd, I could identify an unnaturally produced physique. And yet I'm well, the bad guy. Yet the heroes, I, I have a feeling that a lot of pro wrestling fans don't really care about these people as people. They care about them only as, like, as acts. And if, they, if somebody dies, oh, well, a new one will come in tomorrow. I'm right. not saying everyone, but an awful lot of them. I was just laughing about Vince's comment that uh, he was talking about. Um, the hell was the term that he used? Um, it's in the article here. Uh, the, the, the showman? Showman uh, service performers? Oh, um, anyone who exhibits signs of drug use. And he said, if I see somebody walking around with a syringe in their ass, I'll drug test them. Oh, yeah, that was that TV Guide piece. TV, it was in TV Guide, sure. Yeah, I yeah, that was... That. Uh, you know, no. Actually, he didn't even say he would drug test him. He would, but he would, he would say he would if he saw a syringe, he'd recognize something could be wrong. Right, but he prefaced it with drugs. Who cares? He did say that. Too. Yeah, he said, "Who cares?" Yeah. But if Nobody... I see someone with a syringe, I'd, I'd tell him, you know, hey, <laughs> you, you get rid of the syringe. <laughs> Go do that in the bathroom, not here. <laughs> yeah. Well, he has he has done the no the nobody cares. Unfortunately, the nobody cares um, has not stopped uh, the the rate. The mortality rate of wrestlers. Well, he's at all. right. He's right, though. I mean, but he, pro he's, wrestling he's, fans he's right who despise me, Dave. The, the pro wrestling fans who despise me, they don't really, they, you know, they don't seem to care about a Louis Spicoli's death. Maybe for an instant. Who's next? Who's next? Yeah. Who can, I'm the bad guy. Instead of saying, "Gee, Vince McMahon's the boss. Doesn't he see what's going on? Doesn't he see this guy swelling up? Doesn't he see that this guy's eyes are dilated? I mean, and yet I'm the bad guy." But, you know, you're known by your enemies, too. We have to go to a break right now. I want to make one point real clear on this also, and that is that um, it's actually, um, and, and Phil is actually well aware of this also, and that is that there have been more deaths uh, in the last couple of years in, in WCW. Uh, and not that WWF is, is um, oh. that, 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 that former WF performers and current Brian Pillman, obviously, coming to mind, are hardly immune, but WCW uh, that's really, you know, their, their rate is, is really scary. 
Uh, this is from David D Daniel D'Angelo, who says that tennis does indeed test for steroids. That's right. I remember that story because uh, Peter Cordo, he mentioned this was banned for testing positive. That's right. Peter Cordo was. Now, didn't, now, who was the athlete? There was an athlete in some sport who tested positive for steroids, and then they let him play anyway, or they didn't, I forget, was it, was it, I just remember reading a thing in, in uh, sports. That would be the World Wrestling Federation? No, I don't know. No, 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 no. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I, thought, I know that there's been some um, weird things. This, uh, real quick, I want to mention this also, the Brian Pillman Memorial Show, the third annual Brian Pillman Memorial Show, which is May the 25th. Uh, Chris Candido mentioned this on our show the other day. Chris Candido will face Billy Kidman, and also there will be a match. It will be a tag team match involving Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn, and Eddie Guerrero. They are going to wrestle against each other, but the uh, is exactly what... It will be, you know, like which two against which two has not been determined, but uh, they'll probably decide among themselves. Who's sanctioning that, that, Dave? Is that the WWF? No, that's uh, Les Thatcher. It's totally independent. But, right. Uh, so. I didn't think that, you know, I'm happy to see that they wouldn't exploit his death anymore the way they did when they brought his, put his wife on the air after he died. Yeah, well, that wasn't one of the high points of wrestling, that's for sure. <sighs> that was that was a bad deal. Uh, this is also mentioned. But it's a bad deal, but, I mean, who? <laughs> Whoever attacks him in the mass media, I mean, uh, never mind. <laughs> okay, okay. Now this is this is more on the, on the drug testing thing. Um, it says that basketball. This is from Sean Robinson, who says uh, basketball is widely tested, but they don't test for marijuana. Do they test for? I mean, I'm not I'm not even familiar with. Like I said, no, the, the NBA most... that was a big issue in the off season. They do yeah. test for marijuana. In fact, guys reporting late for camp this this past uh, summer. And guys who are holdouts were all suspect or all uh, suspected of waiting until their their systems cleared. They do wow. well. It's part of the new um, collective bargaining agreement between the players and, and ownership and the league. They do test for marijuana. Okay, now what about do they test for steroids in, in basketball? I imagine if they t if, if steroids can show up in a blood test, they I mean in a urine test they do. I don't know if people I don't don't know if too many leagues or do you know better than I, Dave. Who tests blood? I don't think anyone tests blood yet. And unless you're testing blood, you can mask, you can cycle, you can do anything, just about anything you want, right? Uh, yeah, you are right about that. Now Ugh. baseball, it's this is from baseball. From Sean says that. Uh, Baseball? Do they drug test baseball? I didn't know um, no, they have to have a probable or reasonable cause. Right, right, right. I mean, I know they do. They drug test players, you know, for cocaine and stuff. But, the, but baseball hasn't done anything about the about the issue of steroids. I oh, know yes, that they have. An article. They've commissioned a, a, a an extensive study. The the professors and the and the doctors said ban Andro, and then they ignored him. So they have done something. They've done nothing. But okay, they put up Andrew, a big public steroids. front. Okay, but but they haven't done anything with with steroids that I'm aware of. No, and you know what, Dave? I talk to beat writers who cover baseball, and they say as these guys get bigger, the male p pattern baldness is is is, is, is proliferated, the um, acne on the backs is proliferated, and like wrestling. you know that those are those are telltale signs of steroid abuse. Okay, and he says that steroids are banned in all the major North American sports. Just just to let you know. Technically, based on the contracts uh, that the WWF performers have and WCW performers have, right. I don't believe I don't believe ECW. In fact, I'm almost sure of this, but I, but I do. In fact, I do know not ECW, but WWF and WC per, per, performers in their contracts, they are not supposed to take steroids. It's specifically stated. Now, obviously, that's not enforced, <laughs> but it is. It is there. That's what if it wasn't enforced, Dave? What if What if Vince McMahon said, "I'm testing for steroids." Now, here's a former steroid user, by the way. Who knows that he's former? He claims he's a former steroid user. Um, he, he can say, he, he can say yeah, we're going to test for steroids. Then on the night of his big pay-per-view, his big stars show up dirty. What's he going to do? Who, he, 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 this is, this is the, um, the, 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 wolf, the fox is guarding the chicken coop. What difference does it make if he tests for steroids? You know what he, you know who he's, who he's going to point out as a steroid user? The guy he wants to get rid of, the guy he doesn't want to pay. Then he'll say, oh, I'll get rid of that guy. He's on, he's on drugs. And he'll come out looking like a champ. Actually, you know who, you know who he'll point to? If the ratings get close, he'll point to the star from his opposition promotion. Sure. He's done that one too. Uh, and, uh, actually we've, we've, we've all been through that whole period of, uh, of when they did test for steroids and when a guy came up dirty right before WrestleMania and what happened and, uh, 
you pretty much called it right, because that's exactly what happened. Uh, let's go to uh, Tom in Delaware. You're first up with myself and Phil Mushnick. Hey, Dave. How's it going? It's going really good. I can hear it. Uh, I just have a couple questions. Uh, it's not really directed towards you, Mr. Mushnick. Yeah, I don't think of you as the bad guy or anything. So I do believe there's kind of a double standard in terms of the drug use in uh, some professional sports and then professional wrestling. Uh, Dave, I just wanted to say I was at the CyberSlam event Saturday. I thought it was a really good show. Uh, I was a bit distraught, though, because one of my absolute favorite wrestlers is uh, Yoshihiro Tajiri. And uh, both times I've gone to see him live, he's lost. And this time, it was, you know, he dropped the TV title. Uh, I just wanted to know what you thought his prospects were in the future. I mean, do you think I'd stick around in ECW for the rest of his career? Would he go back to Japan? Or would he have any kind of chance making it in the big two? Well, I mean, Paul Heyman's got plans for, you know, he dropped one title, but he's going to be in line for another, you know, for for other things real soon. I mean, it wasn't like he's being forgotten or anything like that. As far as Tajiri, you know, it's like he's one of those guys that uh, WCW would, would bury and the WWF wouldn't, although WWF has got more of an open mind to smaller guys now than they have in the past. And then they give him, like, that push to Taco and F.A. Rios and those kinds of guys. Well, they don't really push him, but they're, 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 not, they're not embarrassed the way that they would have been a year ago. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if they... If they want him, he wants to go. I could, I could see it. I don't know where, where, where Victor Quinone is the situation. So I think he's the one who actually has the contract with Tajiri. Oh, okay. Uh, but um, you know, I think that he likes the, working in America more than Japan, which is why he's working in America. But uh, eventually, I mean, all the Japanese wrestlers like that. You know, pretty much eventually, they all wind up back in Japan. Yeah, I mean, he kind of. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't even call it a main event push. But, you know, over the summer he had the old uh, the feud with Taz. I mean, do you think he'd be main eventing any more pay per views in the near future? I don't see him main eventing any pay-per-views, but I see him being on every pay-per-view in a solid match. Okay. But not on top, no. Nah, I mean, you know, with ju I, I don't see Justin Credible and Yoshihiro Tajiri as the main event on a pay-per-view. I mean, right. it could, it, you know, I just don't see it. Okay, it could happen. I, I didn't. I wouldn't have seen Taz and Tajiri either, and, and, and it happened. So. Yeah, I do think it just remain one of those guy, kind of guys who just kind of uh, pushes up the general quality of a pay-per-view. Like next month, I read on uh, your website, you can have that match with uh, Jado and Gato. It's super crazy. And yeah, they, 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 they want they want that match. It's not finalized, oh, but you know it's like you know it's like a good action match. Yeah, nice. It's the difference between an average show. You know, if, it, if it's if it, if it hits, it's the difference between an average show and a good show. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with a good show. Yeah, and just uh, one other thing. Uh, actually, my favorite WWF wrestler, Undertaker. I mean, have you heard anything new about when he's going to be back? Uh, everyone seems to think right around King of the Ring. Uh, King of the know, Ring. I mean, he'll be he'll be on TV. I think he'll be on TV in the next month or so. Um, and in the ring, you know, I mean, as soon as he's healthy, you know, what, what, you know, he's torn pack, kind of interesting, torn pack, huh, Phil? Yeah. What kind of angle do you think is sticking him back with Kane or would be Big Show? I mean, he's with Big Show, and he left. I got the impression he's going to be back with Paul Bearer, which means he'll probably be back with Kane. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Dave. Okay. All right. Let's go to Richard in Canada. Richard, you're next up. Uh, hi there. Uh, uh, I guess my first comment is, is I agree with uh, a lot of what uh, Phil's saying on his uh, drug use policy. I, I do wish it was tested more. I, I really don't like to see these deaths, it's, especially with all these families, some of these families going without a father for a long period of time. Uh, I also agree with his views on marketing to children, but I don't really agree with his views on toning the product down from where it is. I don't mind an adult-based product if it's marketed towards adults. No, well, I'm sorry. What's your name, Richard? Yes. Hi, Richard. I, I agree with you. I mean, if you, what you, but you and I both know that we walk into Toys R Us, the, the, or what I don't know what what you have in, in Canada. It's it's Toys R Us up here. They even have a shop zone for the WWF, which I find kind it's of humorous called, in a weird way. It's not called Toys, Toys R Us, A. Eh? No, that's no. a cheap shot, and I apologize for that. But, but when you walk into Toys R Us, when you look at the commercials that are on on uh, WWF and WCW shows, it's not geared toward adults. The whole thing is geared toward kids. You don't see adults walking around with WWF T-shirts. You see, you see, you see children walking around with it. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not looking to censor it as it relates to adults. I'm looking to, to have a, you know, a real sense of reality about this. If they had to choose between an audience of 15 year olds and an audience of 30 year olds, what do you think the WWF and WCW and ECW would, well, maybe not the ECW, but what do you think, given those choices, if they had to push a doomsday button? Will we market ourselves to 15-year-olds or 30-year-olds? 
Which one would they choose? They choose the 15-year-old. So what we what we wish and for and versus what is are two radically different things. Yeah, are are, are many adults uh, enamored by the WWF, WCW? Of course they are, but that's not their main. That's not the main thrust of their marketing. You're not walking into a toy store and buying. I bet you. Do you how old are you, Richard? I'm uh, 23. Do you have any WWF uh, video games? Uh, yeah, I have a copy of SmackDown. You do? Yeah. It's a wonderful game. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what, what is it rated? Uh, I would think not that ratings mean anything. You know, when I was a kid, you told me not to do something. I did it. I think it's uh, teen just because there isn't, you know, any blood. It's just the fighting game because all the other fighting games have are teeth. But, but we both know, I mean, you know, there's a reason that M&M's are, are, uh, are advertised on WWF shows as opposed to United Airlines. There's a reason that video games are advertised as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, Merrill Lynch. Well, it's the perfect audience for video games. You know, you got your, your male teenagers and early adult males. So, but, but I know what you're saying, Richard. I'm not looking to censor it as it relates to adults, but we both know that the WWF and WCW will dry up and blow away without minors. Do you, do you have a point there? Because the kids are the fresh blood to the market. They need to replenish when... Either people tired of it, or they just move on to something else. When pro wrestlers show up at a shopping mall to sign autographs, look at the lines. It's nine, ten, eleven-year-olds. It's not thirty-year-olds. Richard, you're probably not going to go out of your way for that. And if you are, you'll probably be done by the time you're twenty-five. You know, to put to put a. Uh, to, to, you know, even when he says the Saturday afternoon shows and Saturday morning shows are cleaned up when McMahon makes those claims, it's such nonsense because you hear them chanting the obscenities in the background. So, you know, and plus they're promoting the uh, the primetime stuff. You know, even McMahon's even tried to change what a minor is. He he says that we don't we don't uh, you know we 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 put up a warning 14 and below. Well, wait a second, since is he going to hand a 15 year old his car keys? Is he going to have any problem with someone having sex with a 15 year old? I mean, is he going to sell alcohol to a 14 year old? What are we talking about? So he's he's carefully shown that you know he says well we have an adult demographic of over sixty percent, but that demographic begins with fourteen years old. Those are minors. Actually, actually the sixty percent would be would be eighteen and over because it's sixty sixty two percent. And what and percentage over. of that? Six, and what percentage of his audience would you suppose, Dave? And you know this a lot better than I do would be responsible for buying his merchandise. I mean, what, would be under 18 years old. I think that most of the merchandise is probably, not all of it, but most, the vast majority would probably, okay, the, the meaning age of his audience, average WF consumer would be 20, 23, 24 years old. I think that the merchandise is probably skews quite a bit younger than that. You bet. I think uh, it depends. There's certain things there that... Do you have a Richard? Do you don't have any... Kill, well, maybe kill Richard, you know, no offense, but do you have, a, do you have WWF action toys? Uh, not WWF. WCW? Nope. Okay, you have, you have wrestling have action toys? Big part of You have wrestling action toys? Nope. But well, you're, when, you're a big wrestling... Now, who has action toys? Why, why would they make toys... At the, at, while at the same time saying that this is inappropriate for kids. Well, there, there is a market for action figures out there, though I do admit, yeah, most of their toy market is sold for the kids, and it isn't going to, like, the specialty shops that just sell these things to the adult clientele. You know, with Toys R Us, instead of hitting your smaller, you know, big city, like, comic stores. There, 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 there are there are adult collectibles, but I think that we all agree that that's the vast minority of what those things are aimed at. Yes. Yeah, I mean, but they, they, exi they exist, though. But yeah, they're more. I mean, those toys are clearly marketed towards, you know, I don't know what 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 age. I mean, some of that stuff, like the tw you know Twistum stuff and all that. I mean, I can't even imagine a teenager going for that. That's got to be like nine year olds. Some of the stuff. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. And yet he puts on a warning that this stuff is might be inappropriate for people fourteen and under. Who is he kidding? That's a dodge. It's another rationalization. It's like you know, he, but that, but he's not. He doesn't have the exclusive on that rationalization. You, when when all these con congressional hearings here in the states, Richard, were were being endeavored to 
uh, you know, put warnings on video games. So you put a warning that it's not for kids. Well, who'd that stop? Kids? No, that was like a come on. <laughs> you tell somebody, you know, don't sit in the, you, you see a sign that says wet paint, what's the first thing you do? You go over to touch it to see if it's wet. The problem with the video game thing is, and excuse me if I get off a bit topic, because, you know, I still play video games, is that there's two schools of thought that there was the rating thing or the just sent to the hell out of it back to the Mario Brothers type thing, which I don't want to see. And, you know, I agree with you. I don't want to see, like, kids playing, 10-year-old kids playing, like, uh, uh, Zeno Gears comes to mind as a video game they can't play because it's got really deep themes in it. But for a 20-year-old, I found it fun. Do you, do you have children? No, I don't have children. <laughs> Some, someday, Richard, you will. And, you know, at seven, eight, nine years old and the peer pressure begins, you know, that's another thing he talks about. The man always talks about, well, it's up to the parents, it's up to the parents. Meanwhile, on the other side, he, he takes out his violin and he says, I grew up without a father around. So one hand he's saying, it's up to the parents. The other hand he says, I never had a father in my life. So he's so full of it on that end. But wait till the peer pressure starts when you have kids and your eight-year-old is watching the guy grabbing his crotch and screaming, suck it. You're going to say, you know, I can't believe that I indulged this guy all these years. I just can't believe what a, what a fool I was. No offense. I just I, I predict that that'll, that'll be what happens. We got to, we've got to take a course break. I want to mention one thing because I just read about it. I don't know if you're aware of this film, but there's a video game out there. It's not a wrestling video game. I think it's a Duke Nukem game where Duke Nukem is, is um, all tired out or something like that, and he takes steroids and he comes, and he's, he comes back and he's revitalized. <laughs> Right. Anyway, I just I just read about that, and one actually actually uh, one of my girlfriend's you don't, you don't friends, mean friends now. <laughs> brothers actually mentioned that to me, and it was also in Who's Time Duke magazine. Nukem? Duke Nukem's a video game character. Oh, I didn't even know that. Anyway, anyway we've got some old guy, Dave. Look, I want to make a couple of mentions of some of these email things we got here. This is from Joe Nagel, who says, "I was wondering with return with the rumored return of Shawn Michaels to the WWF, which actually there's rumors he might be there tonight." Uh, and with his friend Justin Incredible winning the ECW title, has opened the door for HBK to make a few appearances for ECW. I think that's pretty much up to Vince McMahon. If uh, Vin Shawn Michaels has indicated that he wants to do some ECW TV, um, and if, but of course he's under contract to Vince McMahon, it's up to what Vince McMahon wants to do for Paul Heyman this week. That's from Dominic, who says, "What the hell is WCW doing with the David Arquette Eric Bischoff match?" Yeah, I'll bet that we'll do a 1.8 quarter. If this was part of their six-week plan, I don't want to know the rest. Uh, let's see. Phil says the WF has wrestlers dying in their 20s and 30s. The only drug-related death in the WF I can remember was Brian Pillman. There must be a whole lot more. Could you please say who else died in their 20s and 30s in the WF? There, um, um, it's not so much guys, let's see, in, as far as in the WF, but in wrestling in general that have died in their 20s and 30s, like Spicoli, who worked in the WF, but actually was working for WCW when he died. Uh, Rick Rude was actually 40. Um, but there have been... It, it's it's more of a as I, as I mentioned this earlier. Eddie Gilbert. Of, Eddie Gilbert was 33. He was wrestling in Puerto Rico. He had wrestled in the WWF early in his career. Um, Kerry Von Erich. All um, I think that was suicide more than drug death. But um, there have been the proliferation of deaths in wrestling has been very very high uh, throughout the industry. It's not a WWF problem. It is a pro wrestling problem. Um, this is from Court Bauer. He goes, I've just got wind. It is true that there was a conversation between Sabu and Afa that you reported. There was a misunderstanding of, on my behalf about this matter, and I would like to apologize to Paul Heyman, ECW, and those who worked so hard on the memorial show for passing judgment regarding Paul Heyman and ECW if there was a willingness to allow Sabu to appear on the memorial show. Okay. So, let me check that out. Uh... Let's see. This is from Eric, who says, I think the reason a lot of wrestling fans hate Phil is because the only time he seems to bash wrestling, it's Vince McMahon, it's the WWF. He does make good points, but the WWF is not the only game in town. Look at WCW. They've had contracted wrestlers die, and he, it's pointing to the WWF. What about WCW? Uh, I've killed Ted Turner. I've made so, I've lampooned his goodwill games when he when he... When he uh, gave uh, pledged a billion dollars toward the UN for the to advance goodwill among people, I wrote two consecutive columns about how this phony is uh, you know he's worried about uh, all the, the children of the world except the kids in America. Are you kidding me? When when he brought Hulk Hogan after Hulk Hogan was was shown to be a character built almost exclusively on steroid abuse, I killed him for that. I've gotten all over Turner for this stuff. 
Uh, let me just go through this. This is from uh, Dustin James, who's wondering if the heart James, are going to be. Haven't I? <laughs> oh God, I have read the. You wrote a column on. Uh, what was the column that you wrote on? Uh, was it the one on? There was one that you wrote on Turner. Was it two, three months ago? Was, I'm trying to remember, but uh, where, where, what, what was, what was the, the basics, of, the basis of it? But it was something to do. I mean, I remember the, I remember the column very well. I, you know, I, I, yeah. Have I gone after McMahon in, in, a, in, a, in a more virulent sense, in a more steady sense? Absolutely. But, 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 but Turner, I, I would not count me among his buddies. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let me just see. Uh, 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 okay, this is addressed towards a phone call. Uh, I take offense to what was said earlier because I'm 15 years old and I know the difference between fake and real. I don't think the problem is with 15 year olds. I think the problem is coming from younger kids. I consider myself to know quite a bit about my age and a lot of what goes on backstage. According to the term, you could call me a smart mark, but I don't hit people with chairs or swear because Steve Austin does it. So who, 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 who is he is that directed at me? Whoever brought that issue up. You know, the people, the people in like, you know, when Dan Rather or someone addresses wrestling, they go right to the issue as to whether it's fake. I mean, it's been fake for a hundred years. It's not even an issue anymore. I, I know he, you know, I, I, my, my, my point isn't whether it's fake, it's whether it, whether it desensitizes people. That's, that's my issue, and I'm, con I'm convinced it does desensitize people. When you pitch ethnic, negative ethnic stereotypes and hatred and, and misogynism and, and homophobia and graphic violence to, 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 you know, to beat the band, I think it takes, it, think it, it diminishes us all at every age. I mean, that's not, that's not the point, whether it's fake and whether he can, whether this guy, and you know, even when the wrestlers say, if it's not fake, you know, well, why do I have this hip replacement? Well, you have the hip replacement because you're doing stunts, because it is a physical endeavor, and accidents happen, and even when you get hit with a, with a chair with a, with a, you know, a loosened seat to it, it's still gonna hurt, and it, it but, but, you know, that's not even the point anymore. The point is who we're aiming this stuff at and the price we pay for it. And, of course, it's, I'm spitting in the wind because I'm fighting a losing battle here. This stuff's getting more and more popular. It's going from, you know, just as sports, as mainstream sports are going from over-the-air television to cable television, pro wrestling is going from cable television to over-the-air television. You know, I, I I thought that you wrote a really good column. It was the Dan the Dan Rather column. Remember that one? Right. Oh, it's, about I mean, Mel Carmisen. Right, where where you said that like, uh, you know, like here's Dan Rather like talking about um, you know, all Fine. of these things that are. Or you know, talking, you know, like, he comes, you know, he's, he's he's gnashing his teeth and he's almost to the verge of tears. There was another shooting. What's the mess at another school, a junior high school, a high school? Or we all need gun detectors and stuff. And you know what what's happening to our children? It, you know, I'm so filled with anguish. I'm gnashing my teeth. And at the same time, his boss Mel Carmazin is negotiating a hundred million dollar equity deal with the World Wrestling Federation. Now, now, how does how, now, wh wh I'm not blaming the World Wrestling Federation for every sin in this country committed by a kid, but where does the WWF line up in these issues? On the side of good or the side of bad? Does WWF provide positive redeeming values, no redeeming values, or negative redeeming values? Or if they can't have a negative redeeming value or negative values. In my considered opinion, it, they prov it provides kids negative values. So here's yes. Dan Rather. He's, you know, he's on his knees crying. And meanwhile, he's, don't tell me, Dan. Go up and talk to your boss. Yeah. I know. I thought that's. I, I thought that that was like, uh, you know, you're, you know, a network sitting there in, in, in judgment, and yet, yet nobody, and, and for financial reasons, you know, there's, there's nobody willing to. Uh, what would I say? You know, turn their back on popular programming that would make them money, even if it was aiming a message to children that wasn't necessarily a positive message to children. I guess. Absolutely. Let's go to George in Boston. You're next up with Phil. Yeah, hi. I was just wondering, Phil. You've been following wrestling for over 20 years. I'm guessing. Right? No, no, I haven't. 
I mean, I, was, I watched it as a kid, and then I started following it around 89. Okay, this the is Orient a, thing is when I came back. Okay, this is a stupid question. I was like, you ever heard of the uh, wrestling man. legend uh, Sam Mushnick? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny. My father's name, my late father's name was Sam Mushnick. Oh, my God. I was saying to myself, you... Different spelling, different families. That's okay. Sam Mushnick from St. Louis, Missouri. I was saying, he must know a lot about wrestling. What if he was like a nephew of this guy? <laughs> I, I know. No, he, you, know, you know, Phil Mushnick and I know Sam Mushnick's nephew, Earth. That's Earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No relation then, huh? That's Irv, funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we, yeah, we both know Irv, Irv Mushnick, who's Sam's nephew. Okay. Who's, uh, who, 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 wrote some st who wrote a lot of articles on wrestling in the early 90s. Okay. Because I thought, oh, my God, this guy has the same name of a wrestling legend like Mushnick, Sam Mushnick. No, I'd be living off residuals. I'd be very pro wrestling. Yeah, I'm mean, not, <laughs> not even that, but he wasn't, pro, he was, he wasn't probably into was like today. He was friends with Lutes, right? Sam Mushnick and Lutes were business partners for forever. Yeah, Everybody Lutes is that, the way it is today. That, that Sam Mushnick was a very, like, real giving guy. That, you know, when, when wrestlers were down and out, he made sure they were taken care of. That's what I always heard about him. Well, I don't know. Uh, he, he had a reputation for being honest among wrestling promoters, which, which, isn't, which may not be a huge compliment, but actually it That's was. A good thing. Most people, most people were very complimentary of Sam Mushnick, actually. That's rare in any sport. Like, the only yeah. booker in the past 20 years I've heard of that really cares about is a man like Giant Baba, and he's dead. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's too bad. I mean, um, I, I wouldn't, you know, I... It's, it's a funny word when you say care. I mean, I think that everyone cares. It's just that the, the like, presser... I don't think Vince, like, with, I don't think Vince wants to see these guys hurt. That's obviously, that's obvious. But, it's, like, I'm, I'll agree, back in the old days, like 15 years ago, there was less of a rope to a net if these guys fell. But today, I mean, you look like, the, you know who the Hardys are, Mr. Mushnick? I've heard of them. Well, and Chris Benoit, right? I've heard of Chris. Have you ever Benoit. seen a Chris Benoit match? I mean, he doesn't use steroids at all, and everyone, hey, you know, well, everyone don't, thinks don't, he's don't, don't, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to start fights here, but don't say that. Okay. What? You don't know yeah, who don't uses what? Yeah, we, we don't know who uses, we don't know who no, doesn't use that. steroids. Well, I shouldn't say that. But. Okay. I don't, I don't want to be accusing anyone. Right. Of, I don't want to be accusing right. anyone of anything, but I don't want to say that someone yeah, doesn't right. That's not like right. that either. That's not cool. Especially, you know. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just saying. I heard about Sam Mushnick. That's all I wanted to talk about. No, but That's thanks for asking. No, my my father was a was a uh, an insurance agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Let's go to Zach in Texas. Zach, you're next up. Uh, yeah. Evening, gentlemen. Uh, I have a couple of things to mention. First of all, I mean, the reason you're so often cast as the bad guy, Mr. Mushnick, I think, is I don't want to put words in someone's mouth because it's been two and a half years since this interview, and I may have it wrong, but I mean, the first time I had ever heard your name was in a uh, one of Jim Cornette's famous yeah. My Opinion rants yeah. on... He put, he, words in his, he put words in his mouth on that one. Huh? And I'm, you know, well, what's your he, name? And I could have sworn he made. I, I could have sworn he made some comments about you saying things specific about wrestling fans. That he may or may not have said that. I don't have it on tape. I don't remember I, it. That, I, that was the thing where I think was, Dave. Was that the cartoon character thing? Um, I think that that was right after the death of Brian Pillman. And right, and I wrote that the reason the the reason it's not a big issue is because people consider the, the meaning the mass media and 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 the people who are not sports uh, who are not pro wrestling fans consider pro wrestlers to be cartoon characters. Therefore, they can't die real death. And, and right, that but, got but twisted into, I mean, that was all over the Internet, all over TV and radio and wrestling shows that I said, who cares about Brian Pillman's death? He's a cartoon character. And if I'm not mistaken, and I may be, it was Jim Cornette who, who, uh, who, who said that. Have I been unflattering toward pro wrestling fans? For the most part, yes. When, when uh, several years ago, uh, uh, TV, uh, when I was writing in TV Guide, you know, thumbs down on pro wrestling, at the same time TV Guide was putting it on their cover because it's told so, it's like hotcakes. Um, uh, the WWF encouraged people and even put up the address to, to, to write me mail. 
and I was writing at the time how it, and I still do, how it desensitizes people and how, you know, everybody's so incivil. Meanwhile, we got about 500 letters addressed to me, and I'd say out of those 500 letters, 450 were from kids. And it was the, the language and the death threats, and the, it, was, it was so profane and so vile, and yet these people were calling, were writing to tell me I was wrong, and yet the mere content of their letters proved I was right. Well, I confess to having written one of those letters, but it wasn't profane. I mean, I thought I... Well, you were one of the 50. <laughs> it was well-reasoned and all, but I mean, at, at that point when Cornette made that rant, I had not read your work. I have since, and I have not found a lot referring to to fans as bad people or whatever. But I think that that... I can't have I mean, I got my nephews and my neighbors. They're all pro-wrestling fans. Right, but I mean... A lot of the publicity given to you but by you the think, wrestling no companies. Offense, but what do you think of WWF is going to treat me in a fair and equitable manner? <laughs> right. No, I don't think they do, and that's the point. Is well, the they, don't treat, me, they you, don't treat anyone that way. They don't treat their own employees that way. Why would they treat me, a critic of theirs, that way? Touche. But, I mean, they try to cast you specifically as going after the fans more than the wrestlers. And I think that is why you are seen as a bad guy, because so many people well, think to that. Well, to that extent, maybe maybe I deserve that. Maybe there there is a modicum of truth to that. I, I, have, I have probably, and I should apologize for that, I, I probably have overgeneralized the pro wrestling fan. I have learned in 12 years that there's no such thing, at least among adults, Right. There's no way to, to to completely classify or characterize or generalize a stereotype the pro wrestling fan is. And as someone who fights the stereotypes that uh, pro wrestling promotes, the negative ones, I shouldn't be guilty of same. I will tell you that I have done that, not not in the recent past, but probably, in, uh, clearly I have done it in the past. I haven't done it again. I never will. I've, I've, I've learned that I was wrong. And... My other point is something that Dave brings up fairly regularly, brought up in the Bret Hart interview that's going to be running again on Thursday, is WCW's contracts allow for people to have their pay cut in half or be immediately terminated if they can't work for 30 days straight. And I was saying, if you look at the deaths in WCW in the past couple years, they were either... And the majority of them seem to have been accidental overdoses on painkillers and pain medication. And I was wondering, I mean, obviously there's got to be some correlation between the two, but I was wondering your thoughts on that. If that's true, if that's such a, if such a contractual stipulation exists for someone to sign, I'd like to, uh, I'm going to go to law school tomorrow, I'm going to get my degree as quickly as possible, I'm going to represent these people in a class action suit, and I'm going to own whatever Ted Turner owns, it's going to be mine. What, what I can tell you is, is, that is, is but the, okay, other, well, what, the other part of it is in pro wrestling there's a tacit understanding that if you're not on drugs be it painkillers be it, be it be it amphetamines or stimulants or be it steroids muscle enhancing or human growth hormone if you're not on those drugs you better be right. because those are the unwritten terms of engagement to be a pro wrestler but I mean uh, what 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 oh, let me just let me just get to one thing um in the WCW contracts in um in 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 the new ones and I think in most of them it it enables them to cut pay in half if someone is is not performing for 30 days and determination after 90 days if they are not if they're injured and unable to perform and you know you know it's been said by many wrestlers that what that you know that the encouragement is if you're at 29 days and you're going to get your salary cut let's say from say you're 150 thousand dollar your guy and it's going to get cut to 75 you're going to find your way to get back in the game and you know and and, and we know how what, what that is and it'd be the same way for football players if if a football player was told if you're not back in four weeks in the game your salary is cut in half I think that the drug use in professional football would be way up so anyway I just want to let everyone I want to clarify basically what's there. And, and, and um, Okay, um, we've got uh, Zach on the line. I want to read this one thing. It's an email from Kevin Gray. We've got a couple more I want to read after this call. But it says, I just want to let you know a little more about Duke Nukem. The guy does take steroids, but it's not to become refreshed. 
when he when you have the character take steroids, he can run fast as hell. There's also a weapon where you can shrink your opponent, and if your opponent is shrank and then he takes steroids, he will grow back to his normal size. So anyway, no, steroids are safe. So, and in the anyway, to Nintendo version of the game, it's called Vitamin X instead. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Zach. Uh, I don't really have a lot else to say. I was just wondering what Mr. Mushnick's thoughts were on that subject, because, I mean, like you said, there's no way that it can possibly not contribute to painkiller abuse. And, I mean, if you think about it, Spicoli, Duncan. A, a lot of the, the Rick Root as well. Yeah, but they yeah, they were all they they were all having to do with painkillers. Right. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I it speaks for itself. I, it really does. I mean, it's, in Hollywood, one of the analogies that, that McMahon ever use always uses at least at least when a, an actor dies of a drug overdose, it's on the front page. In pro wrestling, we we all the three of us know Zach, Dave. We we know that it, it's closeted. Yeah, um, it's, I don't know what the WCW's uh, uh, contractual uh, stipulations are, but again, if there's a 30 day period where you must work, oh, there is. Really? There is. Oh, they, 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 they cut. You they must cut work 30 consecutive days or risk. No, 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 no. The stipulation is is that if. If you are injured and unable to get back, let's say you you tear you, you they they are uh, contractually able to uh, cut your pay in half. If you if after the 30 day limit, and that's to encourage people to come back and you know, but uh, yeah, it, it definitely is. And there's a lot of guys who have had their pay cut in half because they were you know unable to perform for 30 days. That's a lot. That happens. Then. That's stunning. I and mean, it's a, yeah. It, very selective enforcement, of course, just like everything else. Right, right. Um, and and forty and, and was it was it ninety days? I think, and the, and they can terminate you for, you know. But that's that's they they, they basically have that in cycles anyway. But the thirty days to um, to, and, and your pay is cut in half is in the contracts. And there were there were several major names that actually had their pay cut not all that long ago, um, including Bret Hart, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, as a, as a, what, what I essentially see as a, as a combination cost-cutting measure and a way to encourage them to return. And clearly, and if, if, if Bret Hart had returned to ring action, because it's, you know, in his case... He would be in the same place as Masakatsu Fukuda now. Um, he could be. Let me tell you something. Um... If if he was, I mean, I mean, uh, let's let's, it, 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 you know, I mean, it, in, in the case of Bret Hart, I mean, you're talking about over the course of a year, you know, that 50% is like seven figures. I guarantee and, you, fellas, on, on a blind, on a blind, I guarantee you that those contracts are in violation of the National Labor Relations Board. They've got to be. They've got to be. You know, I, I'd love to see somebody press that issue. But as we all know, in wrestling, if you fight the uh, the fight the system, you're out of wrestling. Hold on. Anyway. Okay, any, anything else? Uh, no. Y'all have a nice evening. Okay, thanks so much, Zach. Okay, let's let's go to uh, Ricardo in New York. That's a really good point, you know, as far as that uh, that contractual thing. R Ricardo, go ahead. Yes, hi Dave. Uh, hi, Mr. Mushnik. Hi, Ricardo. Um, oh, but um, I just have a question for you and uh, for Dave. Um, yeah. My question to you, uh, Mr. Mushnik, is um, well. First of all, I just want to say that I read your article on. On the on the NCAA and Pepsi and the whole gambling thing, and I thought I it was too. yeah it was it was I thought it was right on the money and it was pretty good. Um, Thanks, Ricardo. Uh, I guess my problem. No accounting for taste, by the way. <laughs> I guess I have mixed feelings about your views on on on, on wrestling and all. I do agree that if that a more responsible attitude has to be taken in terms of how do you handle the wrestlers and and, and and the drug test, test in general. I mean, God knows that if, if that would have been done in the, before, I mean, we would still have Pillman, Brian Pillman, and a bunch of other wrestlers among us. But why? I mean, uh, I have. I guess I, I would ask. I want to ask you to just maybe go a little further. Or that maybe because Vince Vince McMahon didn't create this system. He does a pretty good job using it. But the system it goes back, I guess, to the Indies and and all those wrestling schools. I mean, no, 
Uh, well, it's hard for me to believe that. There used to be slavery, Ricardo. They, they used to burn witches. I mean, we we allegedly live in an enlightened age. Let me let me let me just tell you, if you, the essence of Vince McMahon can be found in the in his newly formed XFL. Here is a fellow who is being sued uh, by the the Owen Hart family in a, in a wrongful death case, and at the same time is announcing that his football league will do away with the fair catch. Now, what is the fair catch designed to do? It's designed to protect players from having their necks broken. Because you, to catch a punt at the same time you're being hit is to put yourself at great personal risk as it relates to your neurological safety, your well-being as it relates to living and dying. And this is the first thing he announces, or one of the first things he announces, is we're going to get rid of the fair catch. And as a spokesperson said, we're looking for a more visceral league. Visceral meaning crude. What does that tell you about this man? Do you think he gives a a rat's tail whether these people get hurt. He no. cares. He cares. He, he cares about his pocketbook. Yeah, we, we, we he know. He cares about how far he can get over. He has become a, a caricature of himself. Yeah, we know what kind of promoter he is, and we we know how. What, we know what he did to uh, to Bret Hart and and all the stuff with Tillman's wife. Right. And we understand that. I just I just wanted to know. I just wanted you to you know maybe. See what's going on in the Indies or or those wrestling schools. I mean, it's hard for me to it's hard for me to believe again that these people is not telling these guys, you know, you gotta take some, you know, well, drugs, you know, in order for you to, you gotta grow up and you know what you know what you have to do, right? So that's also part of the big part of the problem. You know what the big problem is, Ricardo? Let's yeah. get real honest with ourselves. I don't mean to put you on the couch here. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychoanalyst. <laughs> All right. The problem with with you and so many pro wrestling fans, and Dave, I admire you because you put me on. We've become confederates, even though you take a lot of heat for being my buddy. And, and the problem is, is that we like pro wrestling, even though we know it's no good. Mm-hmm. Even though it's hard to, we have to rationalize the living daylights out of it to get over on it. We know that it's not good for society. We know that it's aimed at kids. We know it's no good for kids. We know it preaches all the wrong things. And yet we want to remain wrestling fans. Um, That's so, the problem. So, Mr. Mr. Motion, you mean to tell me that you, if it was up to you, you would completely erase the pro wrestling from America? No, absolutely not. I grew up with pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I, do, I, do I think of it? If, no, I, I, yeah, I've been accused of that so many times. You want to, you want the, you want the government to ban it. No, but I, I tell you what, if the government ever took a hard look at it, the way they would look at, you know, any other sport or any other, any, any other entity, any other business entity that that uh, would, would abuse its its employees. An awful lot of changes would occur. David, I just heard a beep on this um, my my phone here, which means it's ready to die. My okay. battery's dying. Um, Dave, can I ask you a question and then I hung up? Sure. If you lose me, I'm going to say good night now. Uh, okay, okay, Phil. Why don't, um, real quick, I just wanted to, before you go, because there is one more point I wanted to I'll, ask you about. Lose, that, am I losing you? Hang on, hang on. I'm going to get, try to get downstairs. <laughs> okay, um, um, Carter, why don't you ask me real quick? Hang on. Don't you, don't you think that the ECW title has been really diminished by this change of, 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 of Hello? title holder? Oh, okay, are you, are you, are you we're back? alive. We okay, have okay, electricity okay. now. Okay, Ricardo, finish, finish up on the ECW sorry, title Ricardo. question. Yeah, don't you think that he has been really hurt, not only by, by, by what happened on Thursday, but also by these constant changes of, of champions, you know, from, from Taz to, Credi- to uh, Dreamer and then to Credible? I think that for him it has done a lot to hurt his uh, title, his ECW heavyweight champion, he has done as much as as, as, ECW, as WCW did okay, in terms I of think, hurting it. I think that, that and I, I don't know, this may be such an antiquated way of looking at it, but I think the worst thing for that title was the thing on Thursday. Uh, um, you no. know, to me. Now, as far as what happened on Saturday, you know, if they're going to continue to bounce it around, I would agree that you know they're changing it too much and it's going to mean nothing. And it may mean nothing right now, but my impression is is that uh, Justin Incredible is going to keep it for a long time. And after a while, mm-hmm. if he succeeds in the role, he can rebuild it. But 
I think that what they did, they almost symbolized by him throwing the tag team title belt down and that it's a new beginning. And they were, and I almost sense a recognition mm -hmm. that what they've done has hurt it, so now they're starting from scratch. I mean, Paul Heyman had a long talk with me last night, mm -hmm. and it was like, we, he made all these changes, so Mike Awesome is three champions ago, and Taz is two champions ago, yeah. and his current champion didn't beat either of them. So his current champion beat somebody else, and now it's a new beginning. And he, you know, I think there's there's a recognition that, you know, he's changed too much, but it was, it was circumstances somewhat beyond his control, somewhat under his control, but it was just the nature of what he felt he needed to do. I, I, I don't know about the Thursday thing, and, and you know, when I when I talked to him about the Thursday thing, he said that that was basically part of the price of, yeah. you know, of making the deal. Yeah, but it didn't work. I mean, no ratings, uh, according to You're right. the numbers. You're right. uh, I guess the TV title is more is worth more now than than the heavyweight title. Well, it's on Rhino, so I, I mean, if, if Van Dam still had it and had not gotten hurt, I would say absolutely the TV title would have been worth more than the heavyweight title. All right, thank, but, uh, thank you. Okay, um, Philip, I, I wanted to ask you, how, how, how much have you been following what's gone on as far as regulation in New Jersey? You know, uh, a little issue? bit, but that extreme thing. You know, yeah. the, 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 the great work, you know, you've told me all these great expressions. The great work in that issue was McMahon sending Christy Whitman, the governor of, of New Jersey, a note supporting her <laughs> her stance on extreme wrestling as if this stuff wasn't patterned completely after McMahon's stuff and, and, and Turner's stuff, as if um, McMahon still isn't grateful that, he, that she lifted the uh, – you know, the sports authorities, uh, the athletic commission's uh, auspices off of his shoulders so he could do whatever he wanted at, at these uh, at the Meadowlands and places like that. Um, yeah, they have these they have these shows, these fall shows, independents uh, with three, four hundred people in, in a gym. And, um, you know, it's, it's loaded with kids, loaded with kids. And, you know, the, the announcements are if you, if you hear something that's going to bother you, get the bleep out, you know. That kind of, we don't bleep and care. It's you know just real wise guy stuff. And um, there was the, the Star Ledger of New Jersey, New Jersey's biggest newspaper, ran a front page uh, expose on this stuff. And of course, you know once it once it hits the, that kind of uh, media pressure, you know the governor and, and her minions uh, reacted. And sure enough, Vince McMahon jumped in to try to distance himself from it, saying, "I support the." What Governor Whitman feels about this stuff, and yeah, it's, he's the he's the progenitor. He, he's 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 the guy that is all patterned after. He's just, you know, he 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 is at one in one one sense the most evil guy I've ever covered, and on the on the on the other side, one of the most uh, stunning people I've ever. He has no conscience. Um, everything is a work, and um, he gets over more times than not. If he, if he wasn't getting over, he he wouldn't be where he's at now. I want to mention one thing before we head to a break, and this is regarding this is a post from Shawn Michaels. Uh, this is having to do with I guess he will not be on the show uh, tonight. Uh, this is from from the rumors about that started as far as uh, him being on the show, and he just goes. Um, I don't know of any return as of yet. I do have a personal appearance the day before backlash, but I'm scheduled to return home that night. I can assure you that unless someone calls me pretty damn fast, I will be on that plane home. Uh, do not take this as an attempt to buck the system. It's very simple. The WF knows uh, who they want by now. If they want me for any dates, I'm more than happy to make them as long as they are not last minute. Don't worry. They know that about me as well. So what I'm trying to say is that JR and letting the fans know that HBK will be back in some form or fashion for how long, who knows. That's their choice, not mine. I must tell you, it was great to hear that this is a possibility. The WrestleMania access was fun. I'd love to be in the spotlight again. Let me correct myself. I would love to share the spotlight again. The full-timers are the stars. So anyway, that's basically what he said is that uh, he hasn't heard about anything, but uh, he wants to be on TV. If you were... Uh, asked to talk about whether it be pro wrestling um, as far as commission, athletic commission regulations. What do you think an athletic commission should specifically be looking for to make pro wrestling, I guess, better? Well, for the, for the, for the, for the participants and for the fans. We've discussed the drug thing. I would make that as stringent as possible. I would make the penalties as stringent as possible. And uh, beyond that, I mean, <laughs> 
I had a chat with a fellow. What's that fellow's name from the ECW who says that, you know, we're not for kids? Joe Styles? Yeah. Joe Styles? We had a nice chat. He's a nice fellow. And um, he said, well, we're not for kids and this and that. And at the same time, I said, well, then why, why, aren't, why isn't it 18 and, and under or, or 17 and under banned from the premises? I mean, Vince McMahon can say it's not for kids, and Linda McMahon and Ted Turner, but it's not for kids. Ted Turner isn't even questioned on this stuff. He escapes. He, at least at least McMahon is there for, to answer the questions. He, he doesn't answer them honestly, but at least he's there for the for the questioning. But if it's not for kids, why why would I turn on the TV set? Do I see 12- and 13-year-olds at ringside? If we ban them from the, um, you know, like a strip club or a saloon, or a, a, a movie, an R-rated movie, if they were to be banned from the premises, then, you know, then maybe they can't sell that stuff to the kids. Maybe, you know, but those would be two things. One, first and foremost, for the safety of the wrestlers. And, I, and people can despise me, and they do because of my stance on, on pro wrestling. I understand that. But I'll tell you what, if I, were, if I were Vince McMahon, if I were Ted Turner, if I were Paul Heyman, there wouldn't be these deaths uh, you know, of pro wrestlers. Guys would be resting a little slimmer and a little less uh, cut, but they wouldn't be dropping dead in their hotel rooms. And beyond that, you know, if it's not for kids, then let's make sure it's not for kids. Bam, you know, they, the, they can't come into the arena. It, it's not one easy. Of, one of the things in the New Jersey regulation, and, you know, the thing with the New Jersey stuff that really, you know, we talked about this. What bothers me about the New Jersey thing, and, and, it's, and believe me, this is not anything supportive of, Jersey all pro wrestling or or negative towards it. What, what my feeling is that pro wrestling is pro wrestling, and if there is something, and you know, like th in the article, they pointed out some things that were going on, and and the product probably is not something that I would think young kids, as far as like you know, the real gruesome hardcore wrestling mm -hmm. that young kids should go to. I mean, I know that. Um, there was an ECW pay-per-view. It was the last one that Bubba Ray Dudley did because it was Bubba Ray Dudley did that obscenity-laced racist tirade thing um, on, uh, I think it was in Ohio, but I forget the city. But and, and then you see this you know, young kid right in the front row. And, I mean, I felt really, really, I don't know, really bad watching that. And my feeling is that... Um, in the, New, in the New Jersey thing, one of the, the things that they're trying to introduce is banning of kids under the age of, uh, I believe it's uh, 18 from attending what they call extreme wrestling. Now, to me, whatever it should be, and I think it should be discussed what is the right thing, it should be across the board. I mean, it should be pro, you know, it, you know, these things are allowable at pro wrestling or they're not, and that should be for whether it's Jersey All Pro Wrestling or WCW or WWF. The rules should be the same. If, if WWF does something, if, if, if they're going to say that, that cutting your forehead with a razor blade is bad, it should be bad for WWF wrestlers as well as Jersey All-Pro wrestlers. If they're going to say using a machete and cutting your arm off is, or, 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 sli or, or, or slicing your arm up is gross behavior, and they ban it. Not in my neighborhood. Yeah, it's like you, you um, whatever, it's like it should be banned across the board or, or I, not. I hear what I, you're saying. You're looking for equity here. Which is yeah, what, what I'm just looking for fair for because I because I see them in the in the Jersey thing. I think the thing that bothered me the most about all of this is that when you look at the ten points or so that they're making about how horrible extreme wrestling is, and they're not most of the points are valid. That probably seven or eight of those ten points apply to the WWF, and one or two of them don't. And and I don't know which was worse, you know, like the newspaper making a big deal out of uh, the, the the woman who um, or girl who uh, got power bombed through a table and, and ended up cracking her neck in doing so, or the fact that WWF, two, three weeks earlier, or however many weeks earlier it was, did the exact same thing at the Meadowlands to a 77-year-old woman who, you know, through the fact that she knows what she's doing and that she was lucky, came like a quarter of an inch from hitting her head on the floor, which would have been disastrous. And they've, you know, they've, they've let Mae Young do things. That, mm, yeah. you know, one, one wrong slip, and I mean, my God, you know. Dave, I still, I still maintain... That's redundant. I maintain that if executives of within um, uh, advertising companies, within uh, uh, merchandising companies, within networks, if they applied the same standards to our children that they did to their children, 
We wouldn't have to worry about it. This stuff wouldn't be bankrolled. This stuff wouldn't be underwritten. Um, Mel Carmazin, uh, Barry Diller, Ted Turner, um, uh, the, the head of UPN, Dean Valentine, uh, people such as these, these folks, if, if I were to sit with them in a room full of stockholders and showed them pro wrestling as it exists today and, and asked them to say, to tell me why they favor having this on their network, other, other than, than the, the financial we benefits. Know, we, we all know why. But with the, but we, we come back to the same thing. People are selling stuff to our children that they would never dare, not in a million years, sell to their children. Don't forget, Howard Stern doesn't want his kids to listen to the show because he knows it's too vile. But for our kids to listen to it, that's okay. Okay, let's go to Mark in Connecticut. Mark, you're next up. Hi, Dave. How you doing? Good, fine. Good. Great show. I enjoy listening to you. I want to bring a certain viewpoint to this, so if you'll allow me a minute or two, and then we can, uh, you guys can discuss about it. But um, I've been a long-time pro wrestling fan. I've also been fortunate to work in professional baseball. Um, I want to make some, bring up some points that you were talking about at the beginning of the show. Um, first of all, you, would, you know, you had brought up the point that the, if, if there had been three or four deaths in any of the baseball organizations, okay, any of the teams on any of the big league rosters or even the minor league rosters, it'd be on the front page. You're exactly right. The rationale for that is is that baseball, unlike any other uh, sport or pseudo athletic. Uh, sort of, uh, you know, the governing body has that antitrust, that special exemption that it was granted back in the uh, 20s, I believe, or 20s or 30s. To Do you be... think that would be the issue, Mark? Well, well I mean, that's, not, that's, not a me- that's not a media issue. No. I mean, you know, you're right, you're right that that's I, a really me, distinction. Let me keep going. 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 Let me steroids in your given profession. Um, where I'm going with this is, let me tell you something. If you're in, in, in baseball, okay, if you're not a prospect, okay, and that player or, uh, you know, personnel director is coming up to you and basically telling you, well, you're a left-handed hitter and you just don't have enough pop in your bat, um, either find some quick or you're on your way out, here's your release, um, you know, it becomes a question of, of viability, and you know they know the risks. It's the same thing. It's the same thing in uh, in terms of a journeyman indie wrestler. Okay, if Jim Ross or Jim Cornette or whoever handles the front office the evaluation, okay, um, kind of hints around that you know, well, we like your look, we, we think you're marketable. However, you know, you're a little light and you're you're short, so to speak. Um, right. You know, it's a yeah. conscious report. It's a conscious no. I don't think it can be defined in terms of right or wrong. It's like it just you, is. a tacit understanding goes to the doctor. True, true. It, it just, but I, I think that's the way we have to frame it. It, it, it just is, and that is. I would about, suggest to you, Mark, that there will be a death. Uh, there will be a drug-related death as it relates to performance-enhancing drugs. It, it, it probably it. will, and uh, you know, it won't stop there. It, you know, there could be ten times. And you know what? Times. It'll be on page one. It'll lead the news that night and for the next week. It'll knock Elliot Gonzalez out of the night. Oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> thank the Lord. But, but you, in, in, in wrestling, which is annoying, it's the most, it's the most highly, you know, just, wrestling is no, shouldn't be closeted anymore. And, and Dave, my, I think my, to wrap up, I, you know, I want to give you another chance to get somebody on. My whole point to this is, you know, having worked on the baseball end of things, you know, there's tasks that, you know, I mean, everybody says, well, wrestlers, you know, you know they're, they're impressionable to our kids. How, you know, Phil, you can go out to the New York Penn League on any given night, go over to Staten Island and see the Yankees. He's a ball team. I guarantee you, half of those guys are on the juice, I, and, 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 and they're going to be because they have families, and it comes it becomes a conscious choice. Well, am I going to take care of my families now? Right, Mark. Not only that, there's a tacit there was a tacit permission provided by Bud Selig, that's right, the League Baseball Commissioner. That as long as we're not doing anything about Andro, and look at that guy, he's hitting 70 and, home and, runs. And the inmates, I better get mine. And the inmates run the asylum with Selig as an owner being the commissioner. Amen. Amen. Well, Dave, thank you for letting me have on you and having me on, and um, I appreciate your show. Thank you very much. Okay, Mark. You know, there's something that, that was just brought up, okay, and it relates to something because um, I actually just got today um, a copy of a proposed manuscript or some some of, of what Billy Graham actually has done as far as doing a book, and Billy Graham. Uh, just just as an example, you know, Billy Graham was uh, one of the, one of the, one of the I don't know, five, six biggest stars of the 70s in, in pro wrestling and, and one of the pioneers of steroid use in wrestling, and he suffered terrible, terrible health problems as it relates to steroids, which everyone knows about. And if, if Billy Graham, and I, I hate to say this, except that he, and he actually brought it up in a letter to me, 
that I just got today, and it was a very, you know, I, 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 and the basic thing is, is that if Billy Graham were to die next week, I mean, he's probably, in this industry, equivalent star power, maybe a little below Mickey Mantle. Now, when he will not get the publicity when 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 Mickey died. Let me let me and, and 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 his life was ruined by steroids. His life was made by steroids and then ruined by steroids. And if if there was a baseball player, uh, early early mid fifties, uh, or or, or, or who started having terrible health problems at thirty eight, thirty nine, had to get out of the business. Like Mickey Mantle's alcohol related problem. Okay, like Mickey Mantle's alcohol related problem, which eventually I guess led to it. Did that lead to his death? Because I'm not that familiar. Sure, of course. Okay. Yeah. He needed a okay. liver. Okay, if if that was the case. Um, and a baseball player were to do that, I think that the media... Oh, look at, look at Alzado. Yeah. And I'm making sure Alzado was steroids, but let's just say it was. I mean, you know, Alza look at the publicity Alzado got for his whole last couple of years of his life as compared to... Mickey Van was doing public service announcements to the end, telling kids and adults, you know, lay off the booze. Well, knew Billy Graham would do that for, for, for steroids, except nobody nobody even wants to and know. You know what, Dave? At the risk of sounding horribly callous and having my words distorted vis-a-vis uh, -vis the WWF, who would give a rat's tail if he died? Right? I mean, I mean, you know what I I'm saying? That, I think that that's, you know, maybe... People would say, what took him so long? Uh, I, I don't know. It, it, it's just something about... I mean, I look at the equivalents, and you know, when you talk about one would be front page and and one would be ignored, and that there is there is a reality to that. And yet, and yet, here's the World Wrestling Federation. Here's the World Championship Wrestling. He said this is the highest rated stuff on cable TV. Well, WWF sure is. You know, it, it, it and and nobody's asking questions. Nobody, never, quite the contrary. Hey, come on my show. Come on on in prime time. We we're, it's a sweeps week. I need a pro wrestler. Anything, do anything. Come on on. I'll bring uh, the, the Rock on Saturday Night Live, uh, Martha Stewart, uh, you know, uh, Don Imus show. Let's go. Come on, hurry up. It's, it's sweeps month. Let's go to uh, Dominic in Virginia. You're going to be uh, probably our last caller. All right, David, how you doing? Uh, quick, just by wondering, uh, when Arquette and uh, Bischoff do about a 1.3, uh, what are they going to blame that on? Just by wondering on that. I don't know. I think we're going to have to wait until maybe Wednesday for this, only because uh, of Easter. May, everything may be delayed. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, you know. Monday Night Football. <laughs> 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 um, actually, though, I mean, I would say it's at least a still take. Um, it's kind of weird because, like, you know, when I started out, like, you know, reading a lot of his columns, I would just, you know, be like, you know, the idiot wrestling fans be like, oh, he's just against this, he's against this. I swear to God, Phil, I can say this more and more I listen to you. I mean, you're right on the ball on half this stuff. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, I feel I'm grateful. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, true, I mean, I feel the same way you feel pretty much about, you know, basically, you know, the drug situation. And unfortunately, you have to learn one thing: in society in general, in any business form, almost you're a horror society. I yep. mean, I work for, I mean, I work for a major hotel. I'm a manager in there. In three seconds, they can get rid of me and bring you back, no matter what happens. You, I mean, they can get rid of you in one second, and they'll just bring someone else in. And that's, unfortunately, the forms of all work in society. But I mean, be well, much comments, coming from a wrestling fan, your comments mean more to me than, than than any other fan of any other endeavor. I mean, I appreciate that. That's not, I mean, you know, cause I, cause I, mean, I, pretty, I pretty much felt like, you know, especially when certain things happen, I feel like, oh, what's still going to say, what's still going to say, which is almost scary almost to say that. Because I, when I was living in New York, I was reading your post a lot. And You know, you know the one thing that, that, that I, 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 I want to bring up that, that really, and, and, and it's one of the things that's always made me mad, is is whenever... Whenever there is a death among a wrestler, within 24 hours, someone in wrestling will call me up to find out what's Phil going to say about it. And to me, it's like, why don't we do something to, to like get this death rate down rather than go, oh, my God, somebody died. What's Phil Mushnick going to say today? Oh, my God. You know, I just think, you know. That happened right after um, the Owen Hart thing because... You know, it's like a little chat room for people to talk about that. Swear to God, within five minutes, seven people were just thinking, oh, Christ, what the hell is Phil going to say? Which is, you know, I mean, it's almost like you're the anti I mean, it seems like you're the anti-wrestling in a way, which in some fans, you know, I mean, yeah. you're almost like on a low level. Like, I mean, I basically need to be a fan, kind of like we feel on Bishop, but a bomb barrel. But uh, my, my big problem is with people, are, why don't you ever write about the bad things that go on? Baseball and you know well, they don't read your columns. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, an advocate that well I'm not an advocate I'm a complaint a plaintiff that 
virtually all the sport has been removed from all of our sports as as a, as a means of marketing. Oh yeah, I was actually watching this thing with your with your talk on the last word for about probably got to maybe the last five minutes of it. So kind of like yeah, it's been a busy day. <laughs> yeah, it's a multimedia day. <laughs> You've done everything I'll say. Um, actually, I want to talk to you because I was just I did end up going to Cyber Slam over the weekend. Really, the Schwerve. I mean, no. I mean, pretty much when they end up had the credible credible dreamer match. Basically, everybody had, you know, their own thought either, basically, yeah, Credible was going to run the ball and go and spin. Basically, everybody knew Van Damme's going to be next. That's obvious. That's Van Damme's no matter what next. So they feel it's either going to be, you know, Dreamer turning heel or Credible, you know, basically having the bell, which I think, I mean, from the call you had a couple minutes ago, or I think about two callers ago saying devalued, I mean, yeah, it's a total new beginning right now, and I think... Pretty much, I mean, the card itself was just, you know, Cyber Slam always seems to be the best show of the year. This is my third straight year of it, and they always pull the best show. I mean, the only thing I really wasn't getting into was pretty much of the all the two fast because Too Cold was there, and he just looked huge. I think worse than he did in 96 when he was really letting himself go. So, um, I mean, wait, wait for you to go right back. Yeah, Dominic, I really have to, like, wrap this up because we're totally out of time. Right, no, no, problem. Problem. no problem, no we problem. Got... Okay, Phil, I want to thank you very much for doing this David, show. We'll thank talk you. soon. Okay, and I want to tell everyone tomorrow we'll have a Bruce Mitchell on at 6 p.m. We can talk about tonight's wrestling, which starts moment.